This week on Common Grounds TV. We go up a potentially unsafe tower. We talk to some architects. And we visit Cafe Bino. Saskatchewan was a blast, we were excited to see what lay ahead in the land of oil and wheat. We asked a few architects what they think makes a good cafe, and to talk about the experience of coffee as well as the product itself. We mean well at Global Authority, but sometimes it just kind of goes wrong. We made coffee for everyone in the office, but in the process we crashed their power and shut down their network entirely. Our bad. Can't believe we shut down their entire network. Well, anything else needed? Free coffee at the expense of your whole business. Round two comes up. Sean said good. Let's get to Sean. I'll do coffee for sure. Sean, I know Sean. So how the city, how urban dwellers interact with the city. You know, using the coffee shop as an example, I remember when we were in Barcelona, we started to look at the 30 square meter apartment and how people started to appropriate public space as their own since their living space was so small. And as we've been going around, we've, we've seen that people really have adopted different cafes as their own. But like, it seems that coffee shops have become kind of the third place. Like it's something that Starbucks I know refers to. So that work is one, home is one, and then third place, they want to be that, right? That's why they have couches and all that shit. Mm, I say shit. Um, <laughs> chop. Uh, nothing I said was worth showing anyways. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. And to build on what Tony was saying, like it's, it is really interesting. Like if you go to Kensington, there's three coffee shops within whatever, like a one block sort of radius of one another. You have the roastery, you have Starbucks, and you have higher ground. And it's amazing, like they all serve virtually the same thing, right? Like at a certain level, coffee is coffee. I know that we're gonna argue probably differently. Um, but like you can get an Americano at each. I don't feel comfortable going to the roastery. It's like, I, I my like pants aren't tight enough. I don't have enough like, patches or zippers and I don't have a tie-dyed mo mohawk so I can't go to the roastery it's a really odd thing because like there's this little microcosm of people that feel comfortable and identify with the roastery mm -hmm. at the same time if you go to higher ground 
a good chunk of the people are there with their MacBooks, right? Like it's kind of an odd thing, right? And then Starbucks is, it's the same Starbucks as you'd find everywhere else. It's, so it's kind of a funny thing. Like if you look at that example, like they're all drawing from the same crowd of people, right? It's all people that are in Kensington, but like people will cluster in different places. And so you're saying it's interesting because we've been seeing sort of two strata um, within the coffee shop. There's the independents that are offering a highly specialized drink and offering that environment and sort of that, that platform for discussion, that space for discussion, the exchange of ideas. And we're seeing a lot of them move away from things like free Wi-Fi so people don't sit there with their laptops in an isolated little bubble and just ignore everybody. Whereas you've got some of the main chains that are offering free Wi-Fi as the big drawing card and you've got 40 people all in their little tiny unit and not interacting at all. You have your MacBook yeah, screaming you're unique sitting next to 40 other people with a MacBook screaming I'm unique. Like yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, but we were discussing that phenomenon a while ago because that seems to be, is it the Purple Perk on 4th? Yeah. You go there, I've, I've only been a few times. You walk in and, and the, the seating is kind of staggered or, or tiered and then everybody, as soon as you walk in, you turn and you see and everybody looks up. So you have all these MacBooks in a row and they all look and they're all looking at you. And then you then you're PC? Yeah, and then you yeah. <laughs> carrying your Dell. And then you're buying a coffee and then people are just kinda of looking around. Like their laptop is really this little bubble that they can navigate. They can hide themselves or they can engage others. And it's yeah. just really this kind of very safe mediated social experience, you know, mm -hmm. that they go to a coffee shop knowing there's gonna be all kinds of different familiar and unfamiliar faces and then they can kind of decide how intensely they want to kind of engage those people. It's kind of a bit it's kind of artificial. Yeah. You know? Can you replace like the book in the coffee shop though, yeah. right? Because the book yeah, offered sure, the yeah. same thing. I mean, there's something to either hide behind or something to even strike up a conversation to get but, something started. Yeah, it's quite true. It's kind of like that modulated anonymity. You can go with your laptop and just be alone and people understand that is your little wall or you can try and engage with people. You know? These places that are really talking about becoming part of the fabric of the neighborhood are really trying to establish that and not just be a space where people, like you say, can just show up for that convenience coffee and be in and out and not really have any kind of experience. These places are more punting an experience than just a product. At Cafe Bino and others in Calgary, the cafe is a place for people to connect with people and not the internet. original partner Janice Beaton built it in 1990 and it was a quarter of the size it is now and it really has had the same following almost since 1990s. And actually Janice and I uh, were both extensively involved with Slow Food, uh, an international organization and we both sat on the board for six years. So that's where we developed our friendship and then business partnership. So and Janice is next door, she has a farm that she shops. So, yeah, so. Well, I really believe, I mean, Abino is so much about community and I really don't want people sitting in there disconnected. I think Bino is a place to connect, uh, to develop relationships, to have conversations, to just find out what's kind of going on in the world. I mean, I have a group in there who are there, they're here every day. Well, I have so many people here who are here every day and several times a day, but they just get together. It's like this co coffee gathering, and, and they sit and talk. Just, Actual chat room. It's a chat room. I mean, really, yes, exactly. I like yeah. that. Yeah, actually, we have our own chat room right here.